Sportage has been a real success for Kia, and in Europe it's become the fourth best seller in its class, beating the likes of the Audi Q3, Range Rover Revoke, and even the Ford Cougar, so there was probably some nervousness in the company when it came around to replacing it. Personally, I wasn't entirely convinced when the first photos were released, as there are definitely some angles where it looks like a frog that's been, shall we say, anally surprised. In the flesh though, it works better, and our GT line test car beefs things up a bit with a gloss black grille, fake skid plates, ice cube LED fog lights, and these rather neat two-tone 19-inch alloy wheels. It's a shame the headlights aren't LED too, to go with the biohazard LED running lights, although top spec models do get Bison and units instead. From the rear, we think the design is particularly well resolved, the high belt line giving the Sportage a look of solidity, while our GT line car adds details such as satin chrome on the door sills and again on the tailgate. All but the base model wear a chunky roost boiler, while GT line cars go further with dual exhaust poking through the fake rear skid plate, plus these rather menacing LED tail lights that create an impressive detail at night. The interior is now more spacious than before, thanks to a 30mm increase in wheelbase and a 40mm lower floor, and there's also a greater range of adjustment in the seat too. Kia took the opportunity to increase material quality in here, while also angling the dashboard towards the driver, and I have to say the perception of quality is right up there with the best of them, our car's chunky steering wheel feeling particularly good in the hands. Kia are rapidly becoming masters of beautifully simple instrument designs, and the Sportage is no different, complete with high-res central display that offers a choice of speed, navigation instructions, lane guidance, stereo and maintenance info, plus a range of customization options. All but the base model gets sat-nav as standard, complete with TomTom -tom traffic and speed camera updates, plus DAB digital radio and Bluetooth connectivity, while an 8-speaker JBL system is available on higher spec models, as is a larger 8-inch touchscreen. Our only complaint about the system is that it doesn't remember your last volume or mute setting, instead defaulting to a preset startup volume whenever you turn on the ignition and you can't set this to zero. Space in the back is greater than before, intrusion from the transmission tunnel is minimal and there's plenty of headroom too. The seats can be reclined for more comfort on longer journeys, and all but the bottom two models get heated seats back here. Boot space is up by 27 litres, now at 491, and there's a handy underfloor compartment for the spare wheel, plus a space to store the cargo cover when not in use. Dropping the seats increases space to an impressive 1,480 litres, complete with an almost flat floor, although we will say it's a shame you can't fold the seats from behind. Instead, you have to use the lever mounted on the side of the seat base. Under the bonnet, there's now a choice of four engines, starting with diesels of 1.7 and 2 litres, with 134 and 182 horsepower respectively, plus a 1.6 litre petrol with 130 horsepower. The new engine, though, is a turbocharged 1.6 litre petrol, as we have here, and it offers an enticing 174 horsepower and 265 newton metres of torque. Although most people will probably opt for one of the diesels, the 1.6 turbo is a refreshingly strong performer for this market. Peak torque comes in at just 1500 RPM, yet sticks around all the way to 4500 RPM, making for a very linear power delivery. As standard, it's mated to a six-speed manual with a slick shift action that's a real pleasure to use, although it's also available with a seven-speed dual clutch transmission that's also nearly half a second quicker to 60. Thanks to the turbo, it performs far better than you'd expect from a 1.6, especially one in an SUV, and it's not difficult to get the thing up to speed quickly or overtake slow moving traffic. It's also pretty quiet, and once up to speed and out of the low gears, there's very little engine noise to be heard at all. Similarly, wind noise is also well suppressed, although it's perhaps not too surprising that the 19 inch wheels of our car do increase road noise levels a little. The revised suspension also impresses with its noise insulation, something Kia seem to be doing well across the range at the moment, and despite this new Sportage having a firmer ride than the previous model, it's still a comfortable place to spend time. Kia says they've substantially revised the steering setup for this new car, notably relocating the power assistance motor so it's now part of the rack, rather than the column assembly. It's definitely better than before, but there's still not much in the way of feedback and there is some inconsistency to it. 
However, I don't imagine anyone buys a compact SUV and expects it to perform like a sports car, but with just 2.7 turns lock to lock, the Sportage still manages to deliver a pleasing sense of agility. As family transport though, it's not hard to see why the Sportage has been so popular, and this new model only increases that by adding a variety of new safety systems. Top spec models get a radar based emergency braking system, plus blind spot detection and rear cross traffic alert. All but the base model get lane keep assist and high beam assist, while every model in the range gets a trailer stability assist system and downhill speed control. All wheel drive models default to front wheel drive on the road, diverting up to 40% of engine torque to the rear when required, although a lock button by the gear lever can be used to split it 50 50. Ground clearances are useful 172mm, while towing ratings have been increased across the range, with the 2 litre diesel models now rated up to 2,200kg for a brake trailer. Prices for the new Sportage start at just under 18 grand, with our GT Line 1.6 Turbo coming in at 24,350. Compared to the old model, prices have definitely moved up a little, and by more than 2 grand for the top spec models. But with the improvements in emissions and economy, our car recording an average of around 33 mpg, it's possible they'll prove cheaper to run. At the end of a week's testing, we were actually quite sad to see the Sportage go back. It quickly proved itself to be one of those cars that's just so easy to live with. It's practical, offers plenty of space, is comfortable on long journeys, yet is reasonably compact so it doesn't feel like hard work when rolling through town. On top of which, the new 1.6 turbo makes it easy to squirt the thing along in a very un-SUV-like way, and the new GT Line model adds a welcome yet tasteful touch of sportiness to a sector that can otherwise feel a little bland. And that's one thing the new Sportage definitely isn't.